Condemnation have continued to trail the travel restriction imposed on some African countries by major Western countries over the new COVID-19 variant. We will continue our discussions on these developments in this episode of the program, as well as taking you around the continent to see other stories of developments. I am Charles Alpha, welcoming you to this week's edition of Africa Weekly. Apart from Africa, some European countries have added their voices to speaking against what they described as the oppressive nature of the travel restrictions on some African countries. The latest is coming from the leadership of Spain. Since the General Assembly got underway, attention was concentrated on travel restrictions or ban handed down some African countries in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. More worrisome is the discovery of the latest variant called Omicron. Coming down heavy on nations that have shut their borders to African countries, Pedro Sanchez insists it is not the solution to the pandemic. Global vaccination, safe mobility and unity of inter international actions are three crucial steps to be able to, to achieve that recovery for tourism activity, but it's a crucial industry for our economies. But confidence is fragile. Consumers are weary of restrictions that continue to change erratically. There is pent-up demand for travel, but dramatic actions taken by governments make governments make travellers more cautious. And closing frontiers does not work. This virus does not respect borders. With these submissions, Nigeria's Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed says Africa is not being treated fairly, hence the need for vaccine liberation. I'm glad that the Prime Minister of Spain this morning in his address reiterated the same thing, that we should put less emphasis on travel bans because this virus knows no barrier. It knows no frontier. And that the only effective solution to mitigate the impact of this pandemic on the tourism industry and to revive the industry is to ensure that everybody is vaccinated. You recall that in my submission yesterday, I insisted that it's not fair that Africa would enjoy, as we speak today, less than 5% uh, vaccination. Okay, now joining us via Zoom to discuss the subject matter is a development economist from the Samuel Adeboyoga University, Ogwa, Dr. Daniel Chibwese Onyejua. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us on Africa Weekly. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here once again. Okay, Doctor, I know you are aware of the several bans Western countries are placing on African countries, and so we'd like you to help us establish a nexus between international travel restriction and economic activities. Thank you. Well, it's quite unfortunate uh, in this time we are recovering from the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic that this current traveling restriction uh, came in. Well, we know that the new variant called Omicron is ravaging faster across the world. And on the 7th of December, just two days ago, additional new cases was reported. And that has led the Western countries, especially the British government, to place these traveling restrictions. Well, it's not something encouraging because it has ripple effect. Uh, the effect on economic activities. You know, 
quite uh, unfortunate that Nigeria and most African countries depends solely on foreign markets to source their raw materials and depends on intermediate goods. And with this restriction, definitely there will be low ebb of commercial activities across the globe and especially um, Africa. So we will have this ripple effect on so many microeconomic uh, variables. And looking at these microeconomic variables, the, the spillover effect on inflation, for example, we, we are just recovering and we have 50.99% of our inflation. Then with this restriction, we're expecting the inflation to, to increase speaking at the international relationships and the trade uh, bilateral agreements and deals that some uh, investors have already made, which is quite unfortunate that this, this thing will affect it drastically and it will decline sharply. Okay. Definitely because of the geographical distances among African countries and the rest of the world. So, you know, when, when we were coming back and recovering from the first wave, there was high congestion in the aviation sector. The traffic traffic in the airliners increased. Then definitely with this current restriction on traveling and trade transaction, the aviation will lose. We are still battling to improve our industries and to grow our manufacturing product, production capacity. So with these restrictions, where are, where will we be? We will be greatly affected. Okay. and the output level will drop okay now doctor drastically. Uh, uh, doctor uh, i was actually going to ask you you know areas these restrictions uh will be affected in africa but you have just touched some of those areas i was going to ask you there but now if you look at uh when the pandemic broke out uh, now the the restrictions and some of the measures put in place was for uh, were for a long term you know now there was a delta variant and now we have the Omicron variant. Now, what are your projections? Uh, are you s projecting that these restrictions might be for a very long time, or uh, a very long time, or for just uh, a, a precautionary measures to uh, combat this uh, Omicron vir variant? We don't know their mindset for now. Diplomatically, we don't know what they are actually up to. But we hope it will not be for a long time. But I uh, will seriously invite African leaders to look for a more diplomatic way to appeal to their conscience so that they can leave the ban. Because the more consistent and the more longer it takes, definitely we expect a, a very low down turn of economic activity. So we should look for a way to solve all these uh, issues. And it's very, very important for African countries to come together and, you know, look into it prag pragmatically okay. and solve it. So okay, okay. Now, now you, you again touching uh, an aspect of the questions I was about to ask. But let's be specific in this regard. Uh, when you say African countries should take steps, why Africa continues to seek ways to lift the ban? What specifically, in your own opinion, should we be doing at the country levels to mitigate the impact of high economies on our economies? Now, very simple. We, we, we need to use this opportunity to build our domestic market, our domestic production capacity, especially our manufacturing sector. We want to advise the government to seize this opportunity to build institutions, our medical facilities, to provide more adequate and effective medical facilities. And again, to to restructure the educational institutions so that we can reduce the influx of, of uh, studying abroad. Okay. You know, it's very, very important. So if we can build that, we can, you know, we can mitigate this effect All in right. the next future. All right. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your input. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming on Africa Weekly. Thank you. Up next is Titbit segment. Please just stay with us.
Now, Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates have agreed to expand partnership in critical areas for the benefits of both countries. The company owned by the UAE government is not only revolutionizing the defense industry but also changing its fundamentals through innovative technologies and services. On display are a wide range of state-of-the-art capabilities for strategic and tactical demands in respect of land, sea and air operations. If you are familiar with uh, the president in terms of his priorities from the country, right from 2015, he had always put securing Nigeria first in his order. That goes uh, a long way to tell you that Nigeria may likely be then doing business without company. By the time Nigeria acquires those capabilities, you can be sure that uh, if insurgents and bandits have been sent to hell already, they will be sent to worse places than hell. Discussions between President Muhammad Buhari and the Crown Prince, who is also the Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, held behind closed doors centered on this technological sophistication attained to enable a secure future as well as other areas of common interest. The Crown Prince uh, emphasized the importance of self-reliance uh, on military hardware and so their willingness and readiness to transfer technology uh, to develop that capacity in Nigeria. The Crown Prince you know, pointed out that um, in the area of, of energy uh, in particular, especially green energy, and uh, was um, very keen and willing to cooperate uh, with Nigeria, stressed the importance of a sort of win-win relationship. We we'll take you now to Tanzania, where small and medium business owners assembled to explore ways to incorporate technology to drive their businesses. According to statistics from the East African community, micro, small and medium enterprises represent nearly 90% of the total number of all businesses in the region. The sector contributes about 20% of the ESA's gross domestic product, estimated to be close to $200 billion. The sector also provides millions of jobs to people across the region of about 177 million people through the informal sector. Let's put our teams together and look at Africa as our target and the international market because we must also start scaling up to the fight against the Chinese, the Turks, the, the Koreans, the Malaysians. That's where our competition must start looking at. Since its inception in 1999, the annual East African Community Trade Fair has been conducted physically across the ESC member states. However, plans are now underway to upscale the fair by tapping on the evolving technology. This exhibition is going to be elevated to the next level where it will be conducted online. We encourage you once again to register and participate in the online engagement so that this one ceases to be an annual event and it gets escalated to a daily and an all-time interaction. The ESC Trade and Customs Secretariat says the annual exhibition can have a bigger impact with the adoption of modern technology. Our target is to achieve social and economic transformation of the people of East Africa. And our hope in achieving this tremendous lies within this sector. When we think about employment creation, our hope and aspirations go directly into this exhibition and your sector. Mimi nimekuja kwa hii expo kwa sababu nataka kuwajulisha kwamba kukuwa na website haitoshi kuwa ati utauza online. Inahitaji ukuwe na mikakati kama ya research, utumie mikakati ya data, uangalie maelezo watu kenya wanatafuta kwa interneti, ndi uweze kumarket bidhaa zako vyema na uweze kutengeneza bidhaa vyema zinao solve current problems of the people within our society. 
the Director General of Exhibitions from South Sudan, Dr. Christine Oyanak, opined that promoting SMEs provides ESC member states with the opportunity to accelerate social and economic integration in the region. Exhibition is one of the core platforms that develop economy all over the world. So we should not undermine exhibition or fair. That is the way for our economic development. We have a lot of fish. We have fresh fish and we have dry fish. That is one. We have Arabic gum and we can supply all over the world. And we can start with East African community and in Africa in general and in Arab world and all over the world. The ECOWAS Commission has submitted its 2022 budget proposal to the ECOWAS Parliament for consideration. A budget desirous of consolidating on the various COVID-19 recovery efforts in the sub-region. Community levy is the major source of funding for the 2022 budget and represents forecasted receipts based on 2021 deposits by member states as well as expected regional economic growth and inflation. This draft budget shall provide the necessary financial resources that will enable institutions deliver on their mandates and contribute to build a strong and resilient community in accordance with ECOWAS Vision 2050. ECOWAS institutions, including the ECOWAS Commission, ECOWAS Parliament, ECOWAS Community Court of Justice, West Africa Health Organization, GIABA, and Office of the Auditor General are to receive more than 300 million units of accounts, while statutory obligations, special interventions, and peace and security programs account for the remainder of the total expenditure. The community has therefore rationalized and prioritized its programs and administrative expenses for financial year 2022 and the draft budget represents work programs that have been designed to reflect such conditions. The consideration of the community budget is very important, rightly so. We have to mark our meetings with a seal of rigor and work as seriously as our oath imposes. The budget proposal is in line with provisions of Article 5 of the ECOWAS financial regulations. Now, Tanzania is 60, but let's bring you the excitement and hopes of the people as the High Commission in Nigeria raised a glass to commemorate this special occasion. In 1919, Tanzania was placed under British administrative rule, during which time an indigenous African administration was encouraged through local councils and courts. In 1926, a legislative council was established in Dar es Salaam, which is mainland Tanzania, with restrictions on candidacy lifted, the lead to independence became inevitable. And in 1961, Julius Nyerere became independent Tanzania's first prime minister and was elected president the following year. Since independence, five successive governments have come and gone, with the sixth currently in power being a woman. Samia Suluhu Hassan, born in the year Tanzania gained her independence. It shows how their political ideology has evolved with a woman as president. Tanzania is also one of sub-Saharan Africa's fastest growing economies, boasting of average GDP growth of around 7% per year since 2000. The country has historically been an attractive center for trade due to its strategic location along the continent's east coast. Today, Tanzania is seen as one of Africa's most dynamic and diverse countries. Its economy remains highly dependent on agricultural output, although the development of tourism sites like the Serengeti, Ngorongoro, and Zanzibar, and the discovery of natural gas in recent years are part of the giant stride since independence. Culturally, there are over 120 ethnic groups on the Tanzanian mainland, 
most of whom migrated from other parts of Africa, and aerial festivals go on throughout the year, the Tanzania culture is Swahili, an Arab-African mix. Tanzania and Nigeria have enjoyed cordial diplomatic relations since the two countries attained independence. Nigeria High Commission was opened in Tanzania in 1962, while Tanzania High Commission in Nigeria was established in 1971. The bilateral relations between the two countries are hinged on shared vision, mission and values in the international arena. Nigeria and Tanzania played significant roles in the decolonization of the African continent. All of these over the years indeed called for celebration. As a way of commemorating her 60th independence, the Tanzanian embassy here in Nigeria played host to many dignitaries during a series of activities it held in Abuja. The activities began with the press conference and an interfaith program, exhibition of rich cultural values of Tanzania, and visit to orphanage home where food, toiletries, clothes and other sanitaries were presented by the ambassador Benson Alfred Banner. That series of events was rounded off with a special open dialogue where issues of development of African countries were x-rayed. At the embassy, diplomats, Tanzanians in diaspora, friends and foreign associates, and the DG NT represented by the general manager of NT International, Oganya Simon, gathered to celebrate a country that has made significant stride in its foreign relations, political and economic spheres since independence. The anniversary book was signed, the kick, court, and awards were presented to those who have contributed in no small measure to the growth and development of the United Republic of Tanzania. That's our package on this week's edition of Africa Weekly. Many thanks to you for watching. I am Charles Alpha.